Welcome. In this video, we'll be implementing the integers based on the module for natural numbers we wrote in the last video. Recall that there we wrote this uh, script called nats.hs with a capital N. And if you put this uh, script, which defines the module nats, in the same folder as the script we're now working on, which for me is called integers, we can now import the module and get access to the data type of nats we defined there. If you haven't uh, typed out this module NATS on your own for the last video, you can also just go uh, download the corresponding script from the GitHub repo, which will be linked in the description of this video. Okay, so we're going to start by uh, the import statement. So we're going to import uh, NATS. Now we're going to uh, define the integers based on the natural numbers. So let me just uh, close the file system here so we have some more space. So basically, there's uh, several ways you can construct the integers from the natural numbers. Perhaps the most intuitive way is to think of the integers as being like two copies of the natural numbers, one which are negative and one which are positive. So this would be the idea of constructing the integers um, as, let's say, a union of copies of the natural numbers. So somehow we want to union the natural numbers together uh, with itself. And well, the first copy here will represent uh, negative natural numbers, and the second copy will represent uh, the positive natural numbers. Now, because zero occurs in both of these copies of the natural numbers, we'll need to enforce some identification. So we'll want the negative version of zero to be equal to the positive version of zero. But otherwise, uh, negative and positive numbers will be uh, distinct from one another. All right, so we're going to write a new data type, um, which let's call this, uh, I don't know, my int for uh, my integers. And I'll give you a moment to think about how you would write uh, the definition here in order to uh, implement this integers as union idea based on the data type nat that we imported. Okay, I'll now proceed to one solution. So this the idea of this union is basically uh, well, a number is either a positive natural number or a negative natural number. So we can introduce two constructors, pos and neg. So, um, well, a int is either a pos nat or it's a neg uh, nat, like this. And here I just want to uh, derive show so that I can print these things. But I'm not going to derive equality because um, the derived equality would be wrong. The reason is that we have this identification of pos0 and neg0 that wouldn't be recognized by derived equality. Okay, so now uh, if we uh, reload our script here, we have a version of the integers which somehow does not yet work quite correctly. So um, I have like uh, pos nat natural numbers, so I can do uh, pos s of s of z or something like that. And uh, this will give me the positive version of two or minus two would be represented as uh, neg s of s of z. So, so far I can't check whether, uh, well, objects here are equal. So I, for instance, can't check whether neg s of z is equal to pos z or something like that. The reason is that there's no instance of ek for, for this data type my int. And as I said, if we would derive equality, then, uh, well, pos z and neg z would be uh, considered different and uh, thus we need to write our own version of equality in order to enforce this identification. The way to do this is just to write an instance of ek for uh, my int. So we write instance ek my int where, and uh, for the ek type class, as you could go check in the documentation, the only uh, operator we need to define is this equals uh, operator here. So I need to say when to my int should be equal. So I'll uh, give you a moment to try to figure this out on your own. And uh, I'll now proceed to the solution. So basically we have uh, several cases to consider. So there's the case uh, we want to enforce, which is that, well, pos z, so the positive version of zero, and also the negative version of zero, these should uh, be equal. So uh, this should return true here. And then in the other cases, we only want to have positive numbers being equal to each other and negative numbers being equal to each other. So I can write uh, here, otherwise, like some pos n is equal to uh, pos m, 
well, this should happen if and only if like the corresponding natural numbers are equal. So if n equals equals m. And similarly, if, uh, well, if we have a, two negative numbers, neg n and neg m, well, then we want these to be also equal exactly when the underlying natural numbers are equal. And in all other cases, um, we want uh, this to return false because in all other cases, we're comparing positive and negative numbers. So I can just do uh, equals equals blank blank equals uh, false here. Okay, so with that, we can now actually uh, compare uh, these my ints and they'll uh, have the right identification. So we'll have a positive zero be identified with negative zero and otherwise we just uh, have the numbers be the same if the underlying natural numbers are the same. Okay, so that gives us one way of implementing the integers. Another way is to represent integers as so-called difference classes. And the idea here is that uh, we just consider pairs of natural numbers, n, m, like this. And this should somehow correspond to um, n minus m. So a pair n, m here corresponds uh, to the number n minus m. In particular, we can uh, represent any, well, negative integer by just uh, leaving n to be 0 and just uh, having the corresponding number m be the number we want to take the negative of. You can also represent all positive integers by letting m be 0. But, uh, well, for each integer, we basically have infinitely many uh, possible representations for it as a difference class. So here we also need to enforce a lot of identification in order to make uh, this work correctly. Specifically, um, the sort of equality you want to enforce is the following. So a pair n comma m should be equal to a pair, let's call it l comma p. Well, uh, this should happen if and only if the following holds, namely that um, your n uh, plus p is equal to m uh, plus l. Uh, why is this? Well, uh, here this intuitively represents n minus m, and here this intuitively represents l minus p. And now if you take uh, p to the left-hand side, so you add p to both sides here, and you add m to both sides, then you get exactly this equation. And this equation here only involves checking equality on natural numbers, since we're not uh, like uh, subtracting anything. So we can define the equality of these difference classes here, so which might be sort of negative, we can define the equality for them using just equality check on the natural numbers. And so this identification here where we identify such pairs, if and only if this uh, condition here holds, uh, this works uh, for, for the, these difference classes. Maybe I put this on a new line. Okay, so that's the equality we'll be wanting to implement. Now I'll give you a moment to think about how uh, you would write a data type that, uh, well, corresponds to this difference class idea. I'll now uh, proceed to the solution. So the maybe easiest way to uh, do this is to uh, use the type keyword. So remember that type allows us to uh, give like a synonym for a pre-existing type. So uh, here I'm defining, let's call it uh, diff int. So int says difference classes. So type diff int could just be pairs of natural numbers, like so. So here, uh, pairs of nat with nat. So this is a pre-existing type that we've already defined, basically, because the pairing uh, type is defined and also the natural numbers are defined. And now we're just giving this a new name using the type uh, keyword. Now the problem with uh, this easy approach is that we won't be able to uh, implement a new version of equality for this type if we just define it in terms of a, a synonym. The reason is that uh, pairing here, so pairs, the type of pairs already has um, the equality set for it. And well, two pairs are equal precisely when, uh, well, each component of the pair uh, is equal to one another. And this is not the notion of equality we'll want for uh, these difference classes. So instead, we somehow have to, uh, well, uh, implement our own version of a pair. 
And uh, this is not so difficult because you can just use a constructor with two fields to do this. So data diff in should just be like, I don't know, we could maybe call this constructor diff for difference class. And uh, this, uh, well, constructor will have two fields, which both take natural numbers like this. And now I'll uh, derive show, but uh, nothing else. Okay, so diff int uh, is our new type defined with this single constructor diff, which uh, takes two natural numbers as its fields. Okay, and now uh, we can uh, define an instance of ek for our diff ints. Um, and here again, I just need to say what uh, equality does. And while we have this uh, idea uh, for how we should define equality, so I can just now implement this. So uh, we need uh, two, two numbers. So the first is a difference class of n and m, and the second is a difference class of l and p. Okay, and well, what should this be? Well, we just need to check if n plus p is equal to m plus l. So here I just put uh, n plus p is this equal to uh, m plus l, like so. And uh, that concludes the definition because this plus operator is defined on uh, natural numbers uh, in our uh, module we wrote. So this is a second way of implementing uh, integers. Let's uh, maybe test this out. So I can uh, just uh, write something like diff, maybe s of z, and uh, let's say s of s of z. So this would represent the number one minus two, so minus one. Okay, I can now check whether, well, two differences are the same. So this difference I had before, this uh, one that represented minus one in terms of one minus two, well, this should be the same as if I, uh, well, just uh, had a difference class z and s of z, right? This also represents minus one, so it's zero minus one. And in fact, these two uh, things are now equal by the definition of equality for a uh, diff int. Okay, so we now have two uh, versions of the integers. And in principle, we can now extend, um, well, the arithmetic operations and comparison and so on uh, to these uh, new data types. Now, if you wanted to be really serious about this, you would uh, implement type classes like we did in the previous video on the natural numbers where you make all of these definitions, but now just for, for these ints. I'm not going to go through this entire process. Instead, I'll just uh, show you how you would define addition for each of these data types and then discuss uh, the advantages and disadvantages of each. Okay, so let's start by uh, defining addition for the my ints. So uh, I don't know, let's call this add uh, my int or something like that. So it should take a my int and another my int and return a my int. And I'll give you a moment to think about um, how you would define addition on your own. Okay, I'll now proceed to the solution. So basically we just need to go through a bunch of cases depending on whether uh, each argument is positive or negative. So if we're trying to add two uh, positive numbers, so pos n, pos m, well in this case, this is just like uh, adding two natural numbers. So the result will just be n plus m and the result will also be uh, positive. So we just uh, return pos n plus m. And this addition happening here is the addition for natural numbers we defined in the module. Okay, uh, the next case is, well, if both numbers are negative, well, in this case, this is like minus n and uh, this is like minus m. And the result should basically be minus n plus minus m. So that's minus n plus m. So the result should be neg uh, n plus m, like so. And finally, we have these uh, mixed cases where one of the numbers is positive and the other one is negative. Now here, basically, uh, this result should be something like n minus m, right? Because uh, we're adding uh, the positive n to the negative m. But now the problem is the subtraction we defined on natural numbers is somehow bounded at zero. So uh, we need to distinguish uh, some cases here. Uh, so if m is actually smaller than n, then the result will still be a positive number. Okay, so if uh, m is uh, less than or equals uh, to n, 
n, the result will be a positive number, so we can actually just calculate this using our bounded subtraction that we defined for the natural numbers. So it'll be pos n minus m, like so. Okay, but then there's this other case where, um, well, m is strictly greater than n, so we would actually go into the, like, get a negative result. So otherwise, um, we need to uh, get a negative result. And what negative result do we get? Well, we get a negative m minus n, like this. And here, because uh, in this case, uh, n is strictly less than m, we can actually still do the, our bounded subtraction, but just with the order reversed. And well, we take the negative of that result, and overall, that will be the same uh, as actually subtracting uh, integers. OK. And uh, well, now there's one more case where somehow the orders of these two things are reversed. So I now do add my int of uh, neg uh, n and uh, pos m like this. And the definition will be somehow similar, but just uh, inverted. Here we're basically subtracting n from m. And so the definition is somehow the same, except that everything uh, is reversed. So n and m are reversed. So if n is less than or equal to m, we return uh, pos n, uh, m minus n. And otherwise, uh, we return uh, neg of n minus m. OK, so let's uh, reload this and uh, make sure that this actually works in these two complicated cases. So I'm going to test out add my int. Uh, let's say, uh, well, we have this first case where we try to uh, add like some uh, positive number, which is, uh, let's, let's take s of z here. So I'm trying to add 1 to, let's say, negative 0. Um, so here we get the positive s plus z, so that's good. Um, however, if I uh, have a number here in the negative slot, which is bigger, so uh, then I need to somehow take the negative of, of uh, m minus n. So I get a negative 1 here. And then we could also have these positive and negative things reversed. So if I try to add negative 0 to positive 1, that should give positive 1. And if I try to add, uh, let's say, negative 1 here, s of z, to uh, positive 0, then that should give negative 1, which it does. OK, so this uh, add my int seems to be working as it should. Uh, you can see here the disadvantage of this data type. Uh, the way we've defined it is that we have to define these operations on basically all four possible cases. And this is a lot of work. OK, let's uh, do the same thing for our diff ints. And there we'll see that actually the definition is a lot more compact. So let's write a function called add uh, diff int. And it'll be a function that takes, well, two diff ints and returns a third. OK, so I'll give you a moment to think about how you would write this function on your own. I'll now proceed uh, to the solution. So here we actually don't have uh, this these case distinctions, which is an advantage. So I can just directly say what uh, should happen on a difference class nm and a difference class, uh, let's call it lp, like so. So I need to make the definition here. And well, the, the idea is that I just need to add n minus m and l minus p in order to get the right definition. So right, if I uh, think about uh, the difference class of n minus m like this, and I add this to a difference uh, class l minus p, well, what should I get? Well, here I just uh, like reorganize things so that all of the uh, negative parts occur like on the right. So this is the same as a difference n uh, plus l minus um, and then m plus p. Okay, that's just like uh, reorganizing things using the usual rules of arithmetic. And in this way, I now have, well, somehow computed this uh, addition of these difference classes in terms of a difference class where I've like uh, 
modified the individual parts of the difference class. So the result according to this computation should just be diff of uh, n plus l. And uh, the second field here is what uh, the negative part is, is m plus p. Okay, and that's actually it. So in this case with the difference classes, we just have one case, which is much more uh, economical than the definition up here for add my int. Uh, the disadvantage of these difference classes is that somehow we have to enforce a lot more identification, but luckily uh, in return, the, the definitions for, for example, addition become a lot easier. Now, if you wanted to, you could go and uh, think about how you would write functions that implement the remaining arithmetic operations. So subtraction, you can uh, just define in terms of addition. And then you'd have to define also multiplication. Again, with multiplication, the definition will be much more succinct in terms of difference classes, but it might be a bit more difficult to figure out exactly uh, what the definition should be. So my advice there is to consider uh, the same idea as I, I presented here. So you would think about what happens if you um, multiply a difference n minus m with a difference l minus p. And here you can just use the distributive law uh, in order to get an expression of this uh, multiplication here, again, in terms of a difference class. So the idea is you want to somehow uh, transform this expression uh, until it's uh, something of this form, where you have something here happening minus something else. In the case of the my ints, the definition of multiplication just involves like defining multiplication in each of the cases where one is positive and the other negative and, and so on. And there it's uh, not particularly uh, difficult to think about what the definition should be. Again, if you wanted to be very serious about this, you would uh, then go on to write type classes like we did in the video on natural numbers for, uh, well, for my uh, int and for diff int. And then you'd basically have completely integrated this new data type into the, the Haskell type system. But for this video, I'll just leave it at that. So I hope that you uh, can see how you would build the integers based on the natural numbers in either one of these ways and how you could extend, uh, well, the usual arithmetic operations to this uh, definition. Of course, uh, there's a perfectly fine type for the integers in Haskell called int or integer. And so uh, this is basically not uh, useful for, for coding. It's more of a uh, conceptual exercise.